Hello. The Suffering Church has held my attention in recent days. An ancient church, the Assyrian Catholic Orthodox Church, is in the process of becoming the 51st member church of churches together in England. Its congregations here and a recently arrived new bishop remind us of the enormous challenges to Christians in their homeland, Iraq, and the many who have fled persecutions in the Middle East. In the mid-1990s, I was minister of the Bunyan Baptist Church in Stevenage, and a large empty Victorian house was bought by the Coptic Orthodox Church as its youth centre, bringing Egyptian children and teenagers out from London to this Hertfordshire new town. The work was led by Father Angelos, a Coptic Orthodox priest who'd grown up in Australia. He and I became good friends as he threw himself into the ecumenical life of the ministers group in Stevenage. The grounds now hold the Coptic Orthodox Cathedral and Archbishop Angelos heads the work in Britain as Archbishop of the Coptic Archdiocese of London, serving as one of the presidents of Churches Together in England. We remain very good friends. He invited me to an online event on the 15th of last month to commemorate the martyrdom of the 21 migrant workers by ISIS on a Libyan beach in 2015. 20 were Coptic Orthodox Christians and the 21st, a Ghanaian friend of theirs, another migrant worker, Matthew, was also a Christian. Their deaths were filmed by ISIS and the image of each one dressed in an orange jumpsuit, kneeling on the sand with a black masked member of ISIS wielding a sword behind, is haunting. Invited to recant their faith in Jesus Christ and commit to Islam in order to avoid death, none of them denied their faith. Among those addressing this online event last month were the Coptic Orthodox Pope, Tawadros II, uh, Archbishop Justin Welby, Pope Francis and Lord Alton, that doughty defender of religious freedom who spoke of the current plight of the 12 million Uyghur people in China. Martyrdom is a very 21st century experience and not confined to Christians. And groups like Open Door and Age of the Church in Need are right to remind us of the suffering of Christians in many places. Pope Francis reminded those present of the ecumenical witness of martyrs. Their witness is not just to their part of the church, but to the entire Christian community throughout the world. The Coptic Orthodox martyrs become our martyrs too. Orchard Baptist has quite rightly been a supporter of Open Doors and its work for the persecuted church. What all of us can do is pray for it wherever it is found and have a concern for people of all faiths who suffer at the hands of oppressive regimes and the lawlessness that creates space for evil to flourish. I'm reminded of this because this coming Sunday, March the 7th, is the feast day of Perpetua and Felicity. They were martyred in the arena of Carthage in 203 AD, during the persecution of the church there. Perpetua was a young married noblewoman and Felicitas, or Felicity, her slave. They died side by side and, it is claimed, walked into the arena to face their deaths by mauling by animals and then by gladiators, hand in hand. All distinctions of rank and wealth dissolved in the place where only one thing matters, faith in Jesus Christ and the hope of glory. Their witness and story is still told over 1800 years later and brings to life the words of St Paul in Philippians 3. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ. That's the call for all of us to follow. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray for the church persecuted throughout the world. Have mercy, we pray, upon it, grant protection 
and freedom from fear and suffering. And if it comes, gracious God, grant courage to those who suffer and prayerfulness for the whole church as we stand in solidarity with them to the glory of Christ, the one who suffered on the cross and rose again. Amen.